Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and I got my Pumba mask done as a headdress style mask. Now, I, now I should mention, <laughs> if if you're brand new to my channel, I want to let you know that I don't always walk around the house wearing a warthog on my head. Because sometimes it's a lion <laughs> or a meerkat or a mandrel, maybe a hyena uh, or a red-billed hornbill. Okay, now I'm just playing around here a little bit because I'm so excited about the fact that this is the very last Lion King pattern that I'm going to be making. Now I do know that I just finally got these finished at exactly the same time that your Lion King production probably got canceled. But there is going to be normal life again someday. Hopefully next year we're going to be having no problems with this virus stuff and we're going to be getting back to normal. And I do hope that you'll keep these in mind. You can find the patterns for these fellows on my website at ultimatepapermache.com, Pumba. Now I do try to make all of these patterns really easy to put together. It's just a matter of uh, putting the, the patterns on some cereal box cardboard, cutting them out and then taping them together. But with this guy, um, it's a little bit more complicated for he's got bumps and warts and, and the tusks and the weird little balls that his eyes are stuck on. He's got a mane. Uh, there's just a lot more going on with this fellow. It's still easy to put the pattern together and it's really easy to add the warts. I've got patterns for those too. You just do them separately by putting some crumpled foil on the, the little pattern pieces and then sticking them on with hot glue. So it's not hard. I show you exactly where they go. So you'll end up with a guy that looks just like this. But it is going to take a little bit more time to put all these things together because he's just got like I said, he's got a lot more going on than usual. Now, I also want to mention that because I'm not going to the store right now and because I ran out of the wood glue that I usually use for these Lion King masks, I went ahead and used brown paper, like I always do, along with some of the cooked flour and water paste, which works just fine. It actually comes on smoother because the, the water in the paste kind of makes the, the paper melt together so you get a much smoother surface. But because we're only using the really light cardboard for these to make them really light and easy to wear, um, there was a couple of problems that I ran into that I don't run into when I'm using the wood glue. If you've got some of the wood glue in your house, definitely go ahead and use it because it, it really does make things easier. The two things that happened with this is that on a couple of areas, the labels that I printed my pattern on were not stuck down as tightly as they should have been. I That was my fault. I should have just pressed everything down really good. Uh, and I did almost everywhere, <laughs> but there were a couple of places like right here on this little flare part uh, below his eyes where it wasn't stuck on and the water in the paste caused it to kind of bubble up. You don't see it at all on the finished piece. I mean, it's really a kind of a minor issue, but it did kind of bother me when I first saw it. And the, the other part was that the, the, the cap part isn't quite a nice oval shape anymore. The, um, the paste caused it to warp just a little bit. But there's only one layer of paper mache on there and it's still really flexible. And as I have shown you, it's really easy still. <laughs> it will still fit. It just looks funny when you look at the mask from the bottom. Neither one of those obviously is a really big deal, but like I said, if you have the wood glue, you probably want to use it instead. Uh, it was the water in the paste that causes these issues anytime that you're using light cardboard. Now, that, because there are a few extra steps in this one, there's almost 90 photographs that come along with the instructions with the pattern. So you'll know exactly how to get it all done and in what steps to do it. The pattern itself is fairly easy to put together, even though he's got really weird shapes, but it's still very few pattern pieces and it goes together pretty quickly. And like I said, those warts, even though they look really silly, they're really easy to stick on there. After the brown paper mache was on there, I went ahead and made some wrinkles under his eyes just with a one-ply piece of, uh, of paper towel. Um, it's just a little triangular piece that fits right under the eye on that big bulge that he's got. 
you don't have to do that. If you stand off about 15 feet away from him and if your eyes work about like mine do, <laughs> you might not be able to see it. But I think it looks pretty cool. I'll bring him up close here so you can see it. It just adds one little bit of detail, but you don't need to do that if you're conserving your, your paper towels right now. I also painted them very, very simply. I used um, first some white primer. Then I painted the uh, an undercoat of a kind of an orangey brown. I made it with burnt sienna, burnt umber, and a little bit of uh, Naples yellow just to warm it up a little bit. It has just a, a little bit of a red tint because of the burnt sienna. And I covered the whole thing, including his eyes, but not his tusks, of course. Then I made a... a a very light gray using white, burnt umber, and ultramarine blue that grays it out just a little bit. So it's basically a really, really light tan moving towards gray. It's hard to, hard to explain that. You can use a variety of colors actually. Go out to uh, google.com, do an image search for warthogs. They come in a lot of different colors, so just choose the ones that you like. I made him kind of furry. I mean, they're, they're mostly naked, but they've got a little bit of interest going on when you're looking at their skin. It isn't just all one color. So I used a, a wide flat brush with very little paint on it and just brushed it on, uh, leaving a lot of the brown showing through. And then I went back over it with the side of the brush and put in some fur marks. It went together really fast. I did the whole thing like that ex again, except for the tusks, which were painted a, a nice warm white, and the eyes, of course. Um, I put a few lighter strokes in the ears just to give them some ear hair. When that was dry, I made a really, really transparent glaze uh, so that I could make some darker spots and that helps the, the tusks to show up just a little bit better. That was made with the golden acrylic glazing liquid, which I use all the time, and some burnt umber and ultramarine blue. It turns almost black, but so transparent that it it lets all of the under paintings show through. It just goes here underneath the, the eye along this edge here with a lighter stripe down the middle. Uh, it goes on the back side of his, of his wart here and, and up on this wart too. And then, really important, to so put some right here, if I can reach it, put some right here on his upper lip right there so, to make that tusk stand out. And then it goes uh, on the nose to make it darker than everything else and up on his chin. So even though it's really subtle, I think it made a really big difference. If you don't have any golden glazing liquid in the house, and you're probably not wanting to run to the store to get some, um, I think you could achieve something really, really similar if you just water down a very, very dark brown. But it won't be quite as easy to control as it is with the, with the glazing liquid. I always have some on hand, so I use it for almost everything. Now you do want to put at least one layer of acrylic varnish over the paint once it's all dry, and then you put his his mane on. <laughs> that was really fun. I used um, I I just knotted some yarn onto a long string. I I just happened to have this color yarn totally by accident because I oh about every couple of years I pretend to myself that I'm going to teach myself how to knit. <laughs> so I have all these balls of yarn that I never used sitting around the house. I think I probably got this one on an odd lot on eBay or something. Um, but once I knotted it onto that long string, then I, I dipped it in a, a mixture of water and white glue, just Elmer's glue, PVA glue. I don't know what it's called in your country, but we just use Elmer's. Uh, I think that was Eileen's idea. Thank you, Eileen. <laughs> and then lay that out flat and let it dry and it gets really really stiff. You just put that on with hot glue and then push it all over to the side. I think that was a hairdo that was really popular in, in boy bands for a while, wasn't it? Seems familiar to me somehow. <laughs> so anyway, that's pretty much how this guy goes together. This pattern is on my website at ultimatepapermache.com slash pomba, pumba. How do I pronounce that really? All of these guys, uh, these were all done basically the same way, although most of them are for your wall or 
in this case for your your table um, those are all available at ultimate papermache.com slash patterns. So you can find all of those and a whole bunch more out on my website. So come visit me at ultimatepapermache.com and go make something. <laughs> I'll see you there.